Co-Chairman Rubio and members of this commission. It's an honor to be invited back to Capitol Hill to speak about developments in Hong Kong. You may recall that I last traveled to Washington more than two years ago and testified before this commission in this same building on May 3rd of 2017. While I said back then, Hong Kong's one country, two system was becoming one country, one and a half system. I don't think there's any doubt among observers who have followed recent events. Today, we're approaching dangerously close to one country, one system. The present state of affairs reflect Beijing's inability to understand, let alone govern, a free society. The ongoing demonstration began on June 9th when 1 million Hong Kongers took to the street in protest of proposed legislation that would have allowed criminal suspects to be extradited from Hong Kong to China, where there are no guarantees of the rule of law. Still, before the night has ended, Chief Executive Carrie Lam announced the bill's reading would assume and resume in three days. Hong Kongers were preparing for the last flight on June 12th. And then the unthinkable happened. Knowing that Beijing controlled enough vote in the Legislative Council, protesters surrounded the complex earlier in the morning, successfully preventing lawmakers from convening. I was then serving my first jail sentence. For a moment, I wonder why the news channel was replaying footage of the umbrella movement. Although it was not long before I realized Hong Kongers were back with even stronger determination. Lam suspended the bill on June 15, but fell short of fully withdrawing it. A historical um, 2 million damn people demonstrate the following day, equivalent to one in four out of our entire population. I'm not aware of anything comparable to this level of discontent against a government in modern history. I was released exactly three months ago on June 17, and have since joined fellow Hong Kongers to protest in the most creative ways possible. In addition to the bill withdrawn, we demand Lam to retract label on us as rioters, drop all political charges, and conduct an independent investigation into police brutality. Some of us crowdfunded for newspaper advertisement ahead of the G20 summit in late June calling for the world not to Hong Kong. Other entered the Chamber of Legislative Council complex on July 1st, the same day another half million Hong Kongers protest peacefully. Crowd continued to show up in large number in the past 15 weekends, with more rallies taking place almost daily across the territories. But the government would not listen. Instead of defusing the political crisis, it dramatically empowered the riot police. The movement reached a turning point on 21 of July. That night, pro-Beijing fobs with suspect ties to organized crime gathered in the Yunnong train station and indiscriminately attacked not just protesters returning home, reporters on the scene, but even passers-by. The police refused to show up despite repeat emergency calls, plugging Hong Kong into a police state with more violence. On August 5th alone, the day Hong Kong was participate in a general strike, riot police shoot 800 canisters of tear gas to disperse the peaceful mass. Compare that to only 87 fire in the entire umbrella movement five years ago. The police excessive force today is clear. The excessive use of pepper spray, pepper balls, rubber bullets, bin bag rounds, and water cannons, almost all of which are imported from Western democracy, are no less troubling. In light of this, I applaud Chairman McGovern and Congressman Smith for introducing the Protect Hong Kong Act last week. American companies must not profit from the violence crackdown of freedom-loving Hong Kongers. Co-Chairman Rubio is also right for recently writing that Hong Kong's special status under American law depends on the city being treated as a separate customs area. Beijing should not have it both ways, wrapping all the economic benefit of Hong Kong's standing Beijing, in the world while erosion of uh, our freedom. This is the most important reason why the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act enjoys the broad support of Hong Kong's civil society. 
Lam finally withdrew the bill earlier this month. But just as protesters have long stopped calling for her resignation, this decision was almost meaningless by now. The movement is far from over because it has long moved beyond one bill or one person. Our most important demand is genuine structural change in Hong Kong, which means free election. Our government's lack of representation lies at the heart of the matter. As I speak, Hong Kong is standing at a critical juncture. The stakes have never been higher. We are confronted by the huge Chinese military buildup just across the border in Shenzhen. President Xi Jinping is unlikely to take hardline action before the upcoming National Day in October. But no one can be sure what's next. Sending in the tanks remain irrational, but not impossible. With Chinese interference in Taiwan, Tibet, and especially Xinjiang, it serves as a reminder that Beijing is prepared to go far in pursuit of its grand imperial project. I was once the face of Hong Kong's youth activism. In this leaderless movement, my sacrifices are minimal compared to those among us who have been laid off or protesting, who have been injured but too afraid of even going to a hospital, or who have been forced to take their own lives, who have each lost an eyes. The youngest of the 1,500 arrested so far is only 12 years old schoolboy. I don't know them personally. Yes, that pain is my pain. We belong to the same community, struggling for our right of self-determination, so we can build one greater and common future. A child born today will not even have celebrate his or her 28th birthday by 2047, when the 50 years unchanged policy is set to expire. That deadline is closer to us than it appears. There's no return for us. Decades from now, when historians look back, I'm sure that 2019 will turn out to have been a watershed. I hope the historians will celebrate the United States Congress for having stood on the side of Hong Kongers, the side of human rights and democracy. God bless Hong Kong. Thank you. I hope the future historians can celebrate the United States Congress in such a historic moment in which they chose to stand with Hong Kong. Welcome. 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 Welc